right, in this video, this is the custom calendar from scratch part 10. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover the fifth and sixth rows. And I'm also going to go ahead and address a small bug fix. We need to change one minor code. For those of you that have downloaded the full calendar, there's now an updated one, CraftCal V6. If I go into its globals, we need to change one code and it's going to be the fifth row. The code I had here originally is a little bit shorter than what you see here, but this will address something else and I'll talk about it right here in a minute. So if you already have the full calendar, change the fifth row text global to this right here and you're good to go. Now for those of you building this from scratch, we're on part 10 now. You can find both of these components in my free components folder. And I've already added in part 10, I've already added the three globals that we're going to need for this tutorial. No X OLAP, it's an on off switch and think of this as no extra overlap. That's that red text right there. We need two text globals, the fifth row here, that's that code here and then the text global six row, a little bit longer, and that's that code right there. Now let me show you what it does. Uh, right now we're in January of 2019 and we see one, two, three, four, five rows. And technically that's all we need to see for January of 2019. If I cut this no X OLAP off, we're always going to see six rows regardless of what month we're on. But when we cut no X OLAP on, it's only going to show the necessary number of rows to fill up that month. Now, we only need to apply codes to the fifth row and the sixth row because sometimes, very rarely, will we need to hide the fifth row and oftentimes we will need to hide the sixth row. But before I show you all of that, let me go ahead and show you where you're gonna put these two text globals. Let's go over to our items, everything, all the rows, and if we come to the fifth row that we have right here, for its layer visibility, all we have to do is change this visible code to the text global GV fifth row. I'm gonna explain this code to you right here in a second, but we can go ahead and apply that right there. Now, we don't see a six row in January of 2019. I'm gonna fast forward to June of 2019, and now we have a six row here. So let's go to that six row right there. It's layer visibility, text global, GV six row. Now, what do these codes do? Well, let me show you what happens in June of 2019. This is a month that we can test as well. If I come back to the globals and I come up to sun first and I cut it off, this is going to make Monday the first day of the week. Look what happened to June of 2019. It's now showing five rows. June has 30 days in it. We don't need a six row because the 30th ends right there at the end of that row. We don't need a six row. But if sun first is on, it's gonna shift everything over and now we do need the six row. Pretty cool, huh? Now to address this fifth row, yes, there are some cases where we need to hide the fifth row. Very rare, but let's go ahead and talk about that. Then I'm going to explain the codes to you. If I come to the month, and I'm gonna set it to February of 2021. So changing my month to two, we have February, changing our year to 2021. February of 2021, right now is showing five rows. Let's come up to sun first and let's cut it off and check it out. February only needs four rows in February of 2021 where the first day of the month falls on a Monday and that particular February only has 28 days in it. It's not a leap year. We don't need five rows and we definitely don't need six here, right? Now, if I come down here to no X OLAP and I cut it off, we're always gonna see six rows again, so you have that option. But again, if I cut sun first back on, making Sunday the first day of the week, we now need five rows for February. Now the little bug fix, I'm going to rewind back in time to February 2015. So changing my year to 2015. February 2015, the first of the month fell on a Sunday. Still had 28 days in it, we need four rows. Cut some first off, we need five rows now. Cause look at where the one shifted over to. It went from being way over here to way over here. And that depends on which day of the week you want to be the first day of the week on your calendar. So now let's talk about these codes. Let's talk about the fifth row since we're on February here. And to explain this fifth row, when do we need to remove it? Well, here's an example right here because all we need is four rows. So let's see how we are removing the fifth row. So here's our code. If we have some stuff or this stuff. So either this one or this one to start off the code. Well, GV sun first equals zero. Oh uh, no, that's not the case because sun first is on. So we want to skip over all of this, but we have or. Now look at this code. GV sun first, well that means sun first is on, which it is. F dom equals seven. The first day of the month, when it equals seven, that means the first day of the month falls on a Sunday. 
Well, that's exactly what we have happening in February of 2015. So this part here or here, this is true because of this stuff right here. And GV number of days in the month equals 28. Yes, we do have 28 days in this particular month of February. And GV no X OLAP. Notice we do have our extra OLAP cut on. Well, since this OR statement's true, and this is true, and this is true, we want to remove the fifth row. And that's why we don't see a fifth row here. But check out what happens if I come and cut sun first off. We now have five rows. Let's see why this entire statement's going to be false, which means we always want to show the fifth row. So sun first is off. GV sun first equals zero, all right? And F dom equals one. That is not true because the first day of the month is still a Sunday in February of 2015. So therefore, this statement right here is false. Or GV sun first, well, that's not true either because sun first is off and this is saying sun first should be on. So this entire or statement is false because both of these are false. And then since we're linking it with a bunch of and statements, I don't really care about this or this because and statements, the only time and statements are true are when all of them are true. And since we said this first or statement was false, we don't really care about this. Therefore, we're always going to show that fifth row. And notice by me simply changing this, we are seeing that fifth row either being hidden or removed rather, or being shown. Now I'm gonna to go to June of 2019. In June of 2019 is gonna be a case where the fifth row is always gonna be there. But sometimes we may need the sixth row and sometimes we may not, depending on what the first day of your week is. Notice here we have five rows, but if I cut sun first on, boom, we need six rows. So let's talk about the six row code. Now right now, if I have sun first off, we don't need the six row. So let's see how we are removing the six row. First of all, no X OLAP needs to be on. Okay, it is. And now let's read this right here. GV sun first is on. Well, no, GV sun first is off. So looking at my parentheses, I don't care about reading any more of this stuff, but we have an or, okay? GV sun first and F dom equals seven. Don't care about that either because it's saying sun first is on and it's not. Or look at this one. GV sun first equals zero. Yes, it is off. And GV number of days in the month. Okay, that's 30, the number of days in that particular month. Minus, then we have A minus GVF DOM. The first day of the month in June of 2019 falls on a Saturday. That makes F DOM equal to six. Saturday is six. So if we take eight minus six, we get two. And then if we take the number of days in the month, which is 30, 30 minus two is 28. Is that less than or equal to 28? Absolutely. So this is true. And this long or statement here that I have wrapped in parentheses, it is also true because of this little bitty piece right there. So since this is true and all this junk is true, we want to remove it. Now let's see when the six row pops up. All I have to do is cut sun first on. Now we have the six row showing. So let's see why we're always going to show the six row. First of all, no X OLAP. Okay, very good. Sun first is on. So GV sun first and the number of days in the month. Okay, we got 30 minus, now we have seven minus GV F DOM. F DOM is still six because the first day of the month falls on a Saturday. Seven minus six is one. 30 minus one is 29. Is that less than or equal to 28? No, it's not. So right now, this part of the OR statement's false. OR, GV sun first and F DOM equals seven. Well, we said F DOM was equal to six. So this is also false. And then look at this last part of the OR statement. This entire piece of the OR statement is also false because sun first is not off. Sun first is on. So even though this is true and but all of this stuff inside of this OR statement, since all of these OR statement pieces here are false, that makes this entire thing in parentheses from here to here false. So we have true and false, which means the AND statement's false. So we're not gonna remove it, we're always gonna show it. And that is why you see the six row here. Now I know that's a lot to wrap your head around. The OR statements, the AND statements, the parentheses, and the way all of these globals are working together, 
But uh, yeah, there you have it. That's part 10, the fifth and sixth rows. This gives us the option again to show just the number of rows that we need, or should you want to always see six rows, go take the no X OLAP, and regardless of whatever month we're on now, you'll always see six rows. And this right here is one of those examples, July 2019. I don't need that six rows, so if I cut no X OLAP on, boom, it's gone. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.